welcome in all of you. And this is a very timely summit indeed. And recently, uh, we released the regional MDGs report in 2012 and 2013 by UNESCO and ADB Asian Development Bank and UNDP and drew our attention to the following facts about this region. An estimated 542 million people are malnourished in this region, accounting for more than 60%, I repeat, 60% of the world hungry people. They do not receive minimum battery energy requirement of 1,800 calories per day. Around 3 million children die each year before reaching the age of 5. And around half these deaths are from causes related to malnutrition, poor hygiene, and lack of access to safe water and adequate, and adequate sanitation. As we all know, good nutrition depends not only just on the quantity of food consumed, but the quality and in particular the extent to which it provides an essential micronutrients, notably vitamin A, iron, and iodine is also critical. Many countries in this region have medium to extreme levels of vitamin and mineral deficiency. This has serious social and economic consequences. For example, an estimated 2.5% of GDP is lost in India due to this factor. Distinguished participants, food security is not just a matter of increased food production or availability. It also depends on affordability and quality and safety. On this, I'm sure my friend and Mr. Konuma and the Assistant Director General and Regional Director of FAO will highlight and explain details in later after my speech. The Economist Intelligence Units and Global Food Security Index combines the measures of food affordability, availability, quality, and safety. Any country which scores below 50 is potentially food insecure. According to this measure, even Vietnam, a rice exporting country, is borderline food insecure with an index value of just about 50. Thailand is also not very secure with an index value below 60. Indonesia, Philippines, and South Asian countries all have an index value below 50. Ladies and gentlemen, what can a forum like AIDF do to improve the situation? The answer to this question we need to understand some root causes of food insecurity in this region. Let me highlight some relevant findings from ESCAP in 2009, theme study, Sustainable Agriculture and Food Security in Asia and the Pacific. Displacement of many smaller farmers, particularly women, as production was consolidated into larger and more integrated commercial farming systems. This may have increased food production, but reduced affordability or access. High and volatile food prices since 2006, among the factors that contributed to this is excessive speculation in due to the commodity exchanges by financial investors. ESCAP estimates show that high food prices prevented 19.4 million people in Asia and Pacific from climbing out of poverty in 2010 and persistent food and oil inflation can keep up to an extra 42 million people poor in this region. Well, this widens in socioeconomic disparities and as we have seen farmers coming, well, committing suicide when the stellar that crop they kept from the current harvest did not germinate in the following season. The benefits of GM crops are far from certain. There is, for example, little consistent evidence of higher yields. Moreover, little is known about the risks since there has been a relatively little biosafety research on their health 
environmental, socioeconomic effects. Ladies and gentlemen, the idea of being a forum of business community need to be cognizance of these findings. We have seen in the past how aggressive push by the baby formula producers replaced with mother's milk with enormous adverse impacts. We have also seen a recently similar drive by producers of formula nutrition paste needed in emergency situation. Now I trust the members of AIDF are socially responsible business entities and let us work together to design a code of conduct for food related business. That will be the best contribution of our partnership with the IDF to the food security of this region. I think um, I have been blunt and provocative enough this morning and I want you to consider that the United Nations is also changing from the really the superficial diplomatic entity to be a more provocative institution as such. And uh, thank you and I wish you a successful summit. Thank you.